In the last video, we discussed the functionality and implementation of bubble sort. This video will cover the analysis of that algorithm. If you aren't familiar with Big O notation, I recommend visiting one of the links in the description for a brief overview before watching. I'll structure the analysis around four key properties of sorting algorithms. Time complexity, space complexity, stability, and adaptability. Time complexity will take the longest, so we'll save that for last. Space complexity. Bubble sort is an in-place sorting algorithm, so it doesn't require any extra space. By in-place, I mean it doesn't need a temporary array or anything to help store the objects. Hence, this algorithm requires a constant amount of additional space, or big O of 1. Stability. A sorting algorithm is stable if the initial order of equal elements is preserved. Bubble sort is a stable algorithm because equal elements will never be swapped. We saw an example of this in the C++ demonstration. The three of diamonds was positioned before the three of clubs, both before and after the sort. In the selection sort video, we discovered that it is not a stable algorithm because the order of those two cards was reversed. Adaptability. A sorting algorithm is adaptive if it can take advantage of the initial order, improving performance the more the list is already sorted. Bubble sort is an adaptive algorithm because of the early exit condition. If no swaps took place during the previous pass, the list is obviously sorted, so it finishes early. Last but not least, time complexity. In short, time complexity measures how long it takes an algorithm to complete relative to input size n. The phrase relative to input size n tells us that we should mainly consider loop statements or recursive calls that involve n. Here we have two such loops, one nested inside the other. Any statements contained within the inner loop will execute the most times, so that's what we'll base our analysis on. How many times the comparison statement is executed? The fact that the loops are nested hints at n squared, but wait, n minus pass causes the inner loop to execute fewer and fewer times the more passes we make. Why? Because each pass results in the unsorted section shrinking by one element. The question now is how to express this in terms of n. Time for some visuals. We'll use n equals 5 for our example, so an array of 5 elements. A black circle represents one comparison. In the first pass, 4 comparisons are made, or n minus 1. Second pass, n minus 2. Third pass, n minus 3. And fourth pass, n minus 4 comparisons. But we want to know the total number of comparisons. One option is just adding all the passes together. 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 equals 10. But this would be difficult for bigger lists. It just so happens that this pattern is defined as an arithmetic progression. We can use that formula to easily calculate the total number of comparisons. The formula is n times n minus 1 over 2. Ah, this looks familiar from geometry class. It resembles the formula for calculating the area of a triangle, length times width divided by 2. To walk through this formula visually, first duplicate the triangle and position it so that it forms a rectangle with the other one. Now you can see a representation of n and n minus 1 in the formula. n minus 1 is the number of passes. After multiplying, we get n squared minus n. Divide that by 2 to get the area of the triangle, and voila, we have our formula. Big O notation only cares about the highest order term of the polynomial, so worst case is big O of n squared. Now for the best case. The best case scenario occurs when the list is already sorted. After one pass, the algorithm discovers this and exits early. In that case, only n minus 1 comparisons are made. But again, we only care about the highest order term, which is n, so best case is big O of n. Finally, average case, which is almost like doing half of the possible passes. So in this example, pass 1 and 2. You can think of it as cutting off the top half of the triangle, which turns out to be another smaller triangle. We can calculate the number of comparisons in the bottom half by subtracting the small triangle from the original one. Now let's work on the equation. Average case will take somewhere between 1 pass, best case, and n minus 1 passes, worst case. Taking the average of these two cases gives us n divided by 2. 
The formula for the small triangle ends up being n over 2 times n over 2 minus 1 divided by 2. We now have everything we need. Here is the final equation for finding the average number of comparisons. And written in polynomial form, we get something like this. The average case still ends up being big O of n squared because it's the highest order term. The passes that we get rid of contain the least amount of comparisons, so that's why average case is closer to worst case. In conclusion, bubble sort is not a very efficient sorting algorithm, particularly with large lists. Despite having a best case of order n comparisons, the increased amount of swaps make it the least appealing of all order n squared sorting algorithms, especially if the objects are big. Well, that does it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.